If you've just picked up the new M4 MacBook Air or any other Mac and you don't know where to start, this is a video that will help get you going. Here are the things I always do to my Macs to help everything make sense, plus a couple of helpful tips. The absolute first thing I do is clean and organize the dock. Not everyone knows this, but you can actually just drag these icons to the trash bin to delete them. It's the fastest way to clean the dock. And don't worry, these are just shortcuts, so you're not deleting anything. If you'd like to add an app to the dock, just open it and the icon will appear at the bottom. To make it stick, you can pin it by right-clicking and selecting options, and then keep in dock. On a Mac, you can right-click by either clicking with two fingers, or you can just hold control and single-click. You can also rearrange these icons by clicking and dragging them. If you want to resize the dock, you can do that using this line on the right. Just click and drag up or down. You can also right-click this line to change other options, like magnification, which I leave off, and hiding, which will just make the dock disappear when you're not using it. This can be a nice way to get more screen space, but I just leave mine on all the time. The next thing I do is customize my Finder sidebar. When you're navigating through the files on your Mac, you'll see this on the left. I keep mine fairly simple. To customize it, you can go to Finder, Settings, and Sidebar. From here, you can choose what you'd like to show up in that sidebar. This can be super helpful if there's a folder that you always want quick access to. What a lot of people might not know is that you can drag any folder you want onto the sidebar for easy access to it. You can also click and drag these shortcuts to rearrange them. The third thing I like to do is make sure the trackpad is set up how I like it. Some people like using tap to click, but I'm not one of them. To find a setting like that, click the Apple logo in the top left, go to settings, scroll down, and select trackpad. From here there are a lot of options, but at the bottom is the setting we're talking about. Tap to click. While you're in here, you can also go to scroll and zoom and change the way you would scroll. I just leave it at the default, which is toggled on. This is a good space to explore all the trackpad gestures, but if you're new to Mac, I wouldn't spend too much time here. A good gesture to know is three fingers up on the trackpad, which will show you every open window and let you select the one you'd like to go to. While we're in settings, I'd like to point out that there's a search bar in the top corner. Instead of trying to navigate through all the settings menu, just try and search for it. It's way easier. This next one is a program I've been using for a while now called Clean My Mac. I've been pretty surprised with how useful it is. This app is the best way to get an overview of what's happening with your computer and manage it all in one spot. Plus, this app is notarized by Apple, so it's approved and safe to use on your Mac. With Clean My Mac, you can update apps that were downloaded from the Mac App Store or downloaded from the web. You can also scan for and remove malware, optimize your Mac for performance, scan for duplicate files, and clear out old system files that you don't need anymore. Clicking the shortcut in the menu bar shows you a detailed look at your battery, shows CPU and memory usage levels, and even lets you test your Wi-Fi speeds and a bunch of other helpful things. So I just got an email back from Clean My Mac, who said that they could offer a limited time discount for everybody that's using the discount code in my description. There's also a seven day free trial, which makes now a really good time to check out Clean My Mac. We're gonna talk about one of the most important things to know when using a Mac, but first I wanna talk about the fastest way to use a Mac, and that's keyboard shortcuts. I love keyboard shortcuts. So let's go over the ones I use every day. First step is Command and Tab. This lets you see which programs are open and move between them. While holding Command, you can press Tab to move over to the next program available in this pop-up. If you want to move to the left in this menu, just add in Shift. So hold Command, Shift, and press Tab. This is a perfect shortcut to use if you're using two programs and you're switching back and forth between them really frequently, like a text document and a web browser, just as an example. Next is Command T and Command W. In a web browser, you can hold Command and press T to open a new tab. If you want to close the tab you're working in, you can hold Command and press W. And if you want to move between the tabs, you can hold Control and press Tab. You can add in Shift to move left through your tabs as well. Here's a more basic set. Cut, copy, paste. Press Command and X to cut, Command and C to copy, and Command and V to paste. One of the most important things to talk about is backing up your data. The most common way to do this is connect an external hard drive and drag the files you wanna save over to that hard drive. Another option would be to use Time Machine, which is the built-in backup feature on all Macs. To use Time Machine, just connect an external hard drive to your Mac. You should see a pop-up asking if you wanna use that hard drive for the Time Machine backup. The one thing I'd recommend here is just use a dedicated hard drive to do those backups on. Another option that's sort of a backup is using iCloud Desktop and Documents folder. To turn this on, just go to Settings, scroll down to iCloud, and click Drive. From here, you can toggle it on or off. With this on, everything that's on your desktop or your documents folder is automatically synced to iCloud. One of the major benefits here is that if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, you can access the files from your computer on the Files app on your phone or iPad. So if you needed to work on a file that's on your Mac desktop, you could access that on your iPhone, update it, and then when you go back to your Mac, it's updated and synced on there. The downside of using this tool is that you don't have total control over what's actually stored on your computer and what's being stored in an online only mode. In most cases, this is fine, especially if you're working on small files. But let's say you're working on a large video file and you need to download that to work on it, it can be a little inconvenient. A third option would be to use a program like Dropbox that lets you specify if a file is on your computer or stored online only. This is something I use in my creative work. 
I store files on my Mac, and when I'm done with the project, I upload those files to Dropbox and tell it to store them online only. So I can still see them on my Mac, but they don't take up any space on it. All right, so that might've been a lot, but I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if there are things you didn't know, if I went too fast, not fast enough, too in-depth or not in-depth enough. I appreciate your spending your time with me. Consider subscribing and I'll see you again.